It's official. The Bugatti is no longer under the direct control of the Volkswagen Group. After talks began back in September 2020, the charismatic car model will now be under control of a new automotive venture, Bugatti Rimac. Bugatti Rimac is set to be formed in the fourth quarter of 2021 after an agreement between all the stakeholders was reached. The agreement will signal the start of a new focus for Volkswagen and also a transition to the electric vehicle for the iconic Bugatti. The Bugatti Rimac brand is somewhat complicated when you look at it on the surface. So first, let's break down the parties involved in this new automotive venture. From reports, Rimac will hold 55% of the Bugatti Rimac venture, while Porsche will retain the other 45%. Under the agreed structure of the new venture, Porsche will be responsible for all the responsibilities associated with the Bugatti model. In line with this, the luxury car brand will draw from its vast service network and the reputation of its brand image to boost the marketability of the Bugatti. Rimac, on the other hand, will bring its industry-leading expertise to the Bugatti Rimac table. As it has been demonstrated with the C1 and the Nevera, Rimac has proven its credibility in designing some of the world's most advanced electric car batteries. The ultra-fast Rimac software, once implanted in a couple of converted Porsche plug-in hybrids, was one of the most impressive aspects of the Rimac group that caught the eye of the Volkswagen delegation involved in the negotiation of this deal. As such, Rimac's unmatched software building capability will also be a huge asset to Bugatti going forward. Bugatti Rimac will be headed by the 33-year-old Croatian and CEO of Rimac, Matej Rimac. The headquarters of the new venture is set to be built in Zagreb, Croatia, and it will be located just 10 miles away from Rimac's current headquarters in Sveta Nadelja. This new headquarters is expected to be completed in 2023. However, the construction of Bugatti will continue at the Bugatti factory located in Molsheim, France. For years, Bugatti has pushed the frontiers of automobile engineering. It was a darling of Ferdinand Piëch, the late grandson of Ferdinand Porsche. PH is credited as the savior of the Volkswagen Group, navigating the company through the perilous times of the 1990s. But PH was also the primary reason Bugatti remained under the Volkswagen Group for so long. He was in love with Bugatti, and his sentimental attachment to the brand meant the brand would survive as long as it did. But not just that. PH ensured that his favorite toy, the Bugatti, would stand above its peers as the best and most audacious car in the world. This is what led to the creation of an outrageous line of supercars like the Bugatti Veyron. For PH, the lore of Bugatti was in the shock value that it served the automobile industry. It was about the powerful engines, the cutting-edge technology, and the jaw-dropping beauty that the Bugatti exuded. It was never really about the money. Bugattis were not built to make profit, at least not in the eyes of Ferdinand PH. Rather, the Bugatti was about the quest to create an ultimate dream car that defied the odds. But with a change of direction in the automotive industry to focus on electric vehicles, the handwriting was always on the wall for Bugatti, even if Piëch refused to see it. Bugatti's gigantic fuel-guzzling turbocharged 16-cylinder power plant of an engine has no place in the future of automotive engineering, where automakers are battling to create the most powerful batteries on the planet. Slowly, Bugatti will lose its place in the race for the most impressive car on the planet as fuel-powered cars begin to lose their charm. This is what makes the Bugatti Rimac venture so sensible. With this new brand, Bugatti has a chance to stay ahead of the curve and retain its position as one of the most advanced cars on the planet. Without a doubt, Ferdinand Piëch would have been the last person in the Volkswagen Group to ever agree to such a deal. This is why the Bugatti Rimac agreement could only have taken place after Piëch's death. He may not have agreed with it, but frankly, it could be the best move for Bugatti. The puzzling question, however, that many automobile enthusiasts would ask is why on earth has Volkswagen decided to give up Bugatti? Well, from Volkswagen's point of view, the motive is clear. With Ferdinand PH no longer at the helm, the company has decided to let go of its super expensive brand, which in all honesty was nothing more than a hobby project for PH. Instead, the Volkswagen Group is looking to consolidate resources to fund a huge investment program for projects that will shape the future of the company, 
in terms of its profitability and its relevance in the rapidly changing automotive industry. These projects include electrification of various Volkswagen models, digitalization, and a focus on autonomous driving. Projects that the super expensive Bugatti model would have prevent from developing as they should. Although the Volkswagen Group has made this decision in the absence of Ferdinand PH, the company still has the PH family members to deal with. A family that still owns 50% of the controlling interest in the group. And of course, they are well aware of how dear the Bugatti project was to PH. But the Volkswagen Group has deftly handled what would have otherwise become a sticky situation. Despite shipping Bugattis away from the group, they have placed the brand under the direct attention of the PH family's beloved Porsche. So the family has not totally lost Bugatti. Actually, they haven't lost it at all. The Volkswagen Group has smartly engineered a win-win situation for all parties involved, which you have to say is nothing short of sheer brilliance. But what does the new deal signify for Bugatti as a car brand? Of course, as we mentioned earlier, the prospects look exciting. The combination of Porsche's reputable worldwide brand and sales network, with Rimac who has a knack of churning out 1900 horsepower electric hypercars, indicates that the Bugatti brand is in excellent hands. Bugatti lovers can expect some pretty impressive toys from the Bugatti Rimac venture in the coming years. Monte Rematch is contemplating taking his company public next year in a move that could generate up to 5 billion euro, which sounds pretty good for Bugatti. Clearly, with the new Bugatti Rimac venture, Bugatti is on its way to becoming a high-powered electric car. And yes, Rematch is the man who is looking to make that happen. But for that to work out, the electric car boss will have to work seamlessly with Stefan Winkelmann, who is still officially the CEO of Bugatti. According to reports, Winkelmann had already made plans for an all-electric CUV as the next Bugatti model in the pipeline. Naturally, you would expect that Monte Rematch, being the EV enthusiast that he is, would be excited by the proposition from the Bugatti boss. But surprisingly, the Croatian boss is opting to take things a bit more slowly. Rather than develop an immediate all-electric entry for Bugatti, Rematch prefers to opt for a hybrid Bugatti model. And to be fair, the logic behind his choice is reasonable. In his opinion, Rematch is not convinced that the best way to move forward with Bugatti is to throw away 112 years of super-powered combustion engines. Instead, he believes that Bugatti owners should first be treated to a fusion of both worlds, the combustion engines and the electric powertrain, before the journey to all-electric Bugatti models begins. It appears this is the direction that Bugatti Rematch will go in in the first few years of its existence, before offering what will be a mouth-watering all-electric Bugatti model. That said, Rematch has teased that Bugatti lovers should expect an all-electric model before the end of the decade. Bugatti will not be the only model to benefit from the Bugatti Rematch venture. Porsche is also looking to maximize this opportunity to team up with Rematch, it's no news that Porsche has began its efforts to systematically switch to all-electric vehicles even beyond the release of the Taycan and the Macan. Porsche plans to release the electric models of the Boxster and the Cayman by 2023 and 2024, respectively. Also, in 2023, Porsche is expected to release the Porsche 994, which is an evolution of the 992. The 994 will be the first in the iconic 911 series to boast a bigger displacement and environmentally friendly long-range PHEV powertrains. In 2023, Porsche will also be revealing its all-electric replacement for the 918, which will go on sale by 2025. The 918 replacement will borrow heavily from the technology of the Rimac Nevera hypercar in what will be a direct benefit of this new Bugatti rematch partnership. But this will be just the tip of the iceberg for Porsche. 2028 is the big year for Porsche in terms of its electric vehicle revolution. Termed Project 998, Porsche is expected to deliver a full-fledged electric vehicle equipped with over 100 kilowatt hour of battery capacity and a 400 to 600 mile driving range. The car is expected to come with two or three motors delivering incredible amounts of horsepower and torque. There isn't much known about Project 998 at the moment. For now, there are only whispers of what the car would be like. What we know for sure is that it will be a mind-blowing entry from Porsche. But back to Bugatti. From all indications, the Bugatti rematch looks to be a match made in heaven. 
For Bugatti lovers, any fears of Bugatti fading into oblivion with the rise of electric vehicle hypercars can now be put away. Bugatti Remax secures the future of Bugatti and, more importantly, keeps us excited at what the future models of the brand will be like. The new venture could also be a game changer for Mate Rematch and his team as they develop one of the world's most recognizable car brands. So, on a scale of 1 to 10, how excited are you about the Bugatti Rematch partnership? And what do you think about Bugatti going all electric within the decade? Kindly put your thoughts down in the comment section. We'd love to hear from you. And with that, we've come to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next one. Goodbye.